that is one comforting bowl of food. Mm. If you've never tried or heard of panacco tea, then you are in for a treat. And if you don't know what panacco tea is, well, basically it's like a stew, casserole, a, a sort of bake thing. It's layers of potato, carrot, onion, bacon, corned beef, bit of seasoning, topped up with stock. It's delicious. And a key thing as well, it's cheap. Very few ingredients, comes together nice and quickly, and it's perfect for like another flipping horrible, dreary, wet day. The rain doesn't stop here. I feel sorry for anyone coming on holiday here because you're going to have a bad week because it's going to sit down all week. And panacco tea is popular in the northeast of England, particularly around Sunderland and like County Durham. But of course, as always, before we dive into it, like, share, subscribe, and obviously share this to people that are struggling. It's a nice, cheap, easy recipe, this. So it's really going to help people that are on a tight budget, which let's face it, we all bloody are at the minute. So come on, let's go make some panacco tea. As you can see, look, there's, there's nothing to this. There's not very many ingredients. A bit of bacon. I've got mine from my butchers. You can just like get any old cheap bacon you want. A couple of carrots, some spuds, a couple of little tins of corned beef, onion, beef dripping, uh, like kitchen gold this. This stuff is absolutely amazing. If you can't get beef dripping, like lard will do, or just like veg oil or something like that. Got a bit of beef stock, salt and pepper. Did I say an onion? Well, yeah, onion, one large one, or like two, two smallish, two medium sized. And that's it. That's, that's really it. We do need to do a bit of prep. With the potatoes and carrots, I'm not gonna bother to peel those, but I will give them a quick wash just to get any mud and crap off them. And with the carrots, I'm just gonna slice into little rounds. But keep them fairly thin so they cook all the way through in the oven. Potatoes, I'll slice up. And I'd say to about the thickness of a pound coin. Usual drill, I'll peel the onion and I'm gonna slice it fairly thin. I don't want big chunks in there. The corned beef, I'll take it out of its stupid tin. I don't know why companies hold on to this stupid flipping key system on corned beef. Like, surely there's a better option. If you lose the key, you're bloody stuffed, didn't you? And once you've been fighting and got the corned beef out of the tin, just slice it up into, well, slices. The bacon I'll take out of the packet and I'll slice it up into like little lardons. And then just make up your stock. I've got about, what's there, about 800 mil there. So there is everything prepped, ready to go. The, uh, the potatoes I've just put into a bowl of cold water, that just like, sort of prevents them from going brown whilst you're prepping everything else. So we're now ready to make the panacco tea. Um, what do I need? Big pan, that's what I need. I'm gonna turn it onto a fairly high heat because we're gonna add the bacon to it in a second. First off, I'm gonna add a good old dollop of our beef dripping and wait for that beef dripping to melt and the pan gets nice and hot. Then you go straight in with the bacon. Can you smoked or unsmoked? I don't think it really matters. And just for a couple of minutes, get that bacon nice and crispy. And once you've got a bit of colour on that bacon, you can take it out. You don't need a lot of colour, just a little bit of a bit of a tinge. And you can turn the hob off as well. You don't need you don't need the hob anymore. And all that crustiness, the bacon fat, the beef dripping, don't flipping wash your pan. That is that is kitchen gold. That is going to make your panacco tea taste delicious. And to assemble the panacco tea, it's just basically a game of layers. So I'm gonna go down with a layer of potatoes first. You can be all fancy with it if you want or just chuck it in, it doesn't really matter. Then a, a smattering of onions, a little bit of bacon, some carrots, a little pinch of salt, but be very careful. Go easy on the salt, because remember we've got salty bacon, salty corned beef, there's salt in the stock as well. So just, just a little bit. A bit of fresh cracked black pepper, few slabs of your corned beef and then literally start the same process again so some more spuds on the top and just keep repeating that until you've used everything up and when you get to the top layer of potatoes before you put them on just give it a bit of a press sort of press everything out and if you want to you can sort of like make your final layer look a bit pretty which is what I'm gonna do and once you put your final layer on I'm gonna add the stock which you want just enough to come underneath the potatoes, the top layer. You don't want to like covered in swimming because we want those potatoes on the top to go nice and crisp. And just to finish the top, just a little bit of salt and pepper again, but be careful with that salt. As I said before, there's, there's a lot of salty stuff in here. Now preheat your oven to 200 degrees C, uh, fan assisted, about 220, non-fan assisted, and about gas mark six, I think. Again, I'll put it up on the screen because I always bloody well forget, don't I? And this little beauty is now ready for the oven. So put it into the middle of the oven and that's gonna take around 40 to 50 minutes to cook. And this is optional for the last 10 minutes. You can crank up the oven to like 230, 240. Add a couple of knobs of butter on top. 
whack it back in, give it oh, 10, 15 minutes or so until that top is nice and crispy and golden brown. Mox is supervising. You're starting to look old now, aren't you, mate? Mm. Bless you. You're still my favourite boy, though, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Look at how bloody glorious that looks. But I haven't said this for a while. Uh, that is going to be hotter than Satan's bomb crack. That is a bubbling pot of volcano juice in there. So just leave it alone for like five minutes or so just to cool down a little bit. Then you can dish that up into a nice deep bowl and just stuff it in your face. That is one comforting bowl of food. Mm, warming, savoury, bloody well perfect for this rainy old afternoon. Panacle tea, get it made. And if you're a novice cook, look, you, you can't get much easier than that. And I'm gonna be eating panacle tea for about the next week because there's, there's loads there. You'll feed five hungry people with that, no problem. So there we go, I've showed you how to make panacle tea, a northeast of England delicacy, and it's delicious. And if you enjoyed the video, please stick a like on it. Just leave a comment down below as well because I wanna know what your favourite regional dishes are. Where do you live in the country and what's it famous for? I live in Leicester, so we're famous for pork pies, Stilton cheese and Red Leicester cheese, amongst other things. But listen, I'm going to shoot off, leave you to it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see your lovely faces next time. Ta for now. Mmm, oh God. Dribbling. And he is from Sunderland, so he lives on chicken dippers. He feeds them to his Alsatian, and he feeds them to his nippers. He lives in a rented bungalow with fridges on the lawn. He steals next door's electric and downloads farmer's porn. Sunderland is a fucking nightmare. The streets are heaped high with Johnnies and dog dirt. Sunderland is a significant shithole There's dogs in prams And urine in the food malls And he goes out dogging With his dolmio in a flask He never gets any takers In his Lee Catamol mask <laughs> When Andy is up the Asda He watches like a hawk Waiting for the staff To put reductions on the pork Sunderland's a fucking nightmare The lasses stride round like the prawns in District 9 Sunderland's a significant shithole With donkeys running wild And bunting made from bog roll Bunting made from bog roll